Chapter 16, Covalent Bonding. Let's look at the polarity of a bond. When you have two atoms that have exactly the same electronegativity, the electrons are going to be shared equally between the two atoms. That's illustrated by this uniform electron cloud that's distributed around the two nuclei. This is a nonpolar bond. When you have atoms that have different electronegativities, one of those atoms is going to pull the electrons more towards it. It's not going to share the electrons equally between the atoms. This is going to result in a partial negative and a partial positive charge called a dipole in the bond. If your atoms are exactly the same, their electronegativities are the same, and you have a nonpolar bond. If your two atoms are different, then you have a polar bond. The greater the difference in their electronegativity, the greater the difference in the polarity of the bond. Remember, electronegativity is the ability of an atom that's in a compound to attract the electrons to itself. Fluorine, being the smallest, is the most electronegative element. Electronegativity decreases as you go down a group and increases left to right. The differences in electronegativity will tell you how they bond with each other and the polarity of that bond. These two atoms are the same, so there's no difference in electronegativity between them. The electrons are being shared equally. The bond that forms is nonpolar. In this molecule, the atoms are not the same. There's a small difference in electronegativity. The electrons are pulled more towards the smaller atom, creating a slightly polar bond. In this bonding, there's a large difference in electronegativity between the two atoms. Again, the smaller one will pull the electrons more towards it. It is more electronegative. And this creates a bond that is very polar. Ionic bonds form between a metal and a nonmetal with very large differences in electronegativities. So instead of sharing, the electrons are actually completely transferred from the metal to the nonmetal. Your nonpolar covalent bonds form between two nonmetal elements where there is little or no electronegativity difference. And your polar covalent bonds form between nonmetal elements with a large difference in electronegativity. And that forms a covalent bond. It is polar covalent, but not as polar as an ionic bond. The electrons are not completely transferred, just not shared equally. This is an example of a nonpolar covalent bond, a polar covalent bond, and a complete transfer of electrons or an ionic bond. Again, an extreme difference in electronegativity gives you a transfer of electrons in an ionic compound. This would be metals and nonmetals, sodium chloride, calcium sulfate, magnesium oxide. Polar covalent bonds would be between nonmetals that are not the same and do not have an equal sharing of electrons, like nitrogen trioxide, carbon tetrachloride, or water. Your nonpolar covalent bond, again, between two nonmetals that are exactly the same and share the electrons equally. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine are examples. These drawings show the electron cloud arrangement around the nuclei in a nonpolar covalent compound, polar covalent compound, and in an ionic compound. See if you can state the type of bonding in each of these compounds. Now let's talk about molecular polarity. Even if all of the bonds in a molecule are polar, those bonds can be arranged so that there's an equal distribution of charge around the entire molecule, making the molecule nonpolar. So the bonds can be polar, but their arrangement can lead to a nonpolar 
molecular structure. If the terminal atoms, or the atoms at the end, are the same, then these particular molecular shapes will never be polar. Even though each bond to the central atom is polar, all of the arrangements of the atoms around the central atom are uniform or symmetrical. So the total charge distribution around the central atom is uniform. There's no positive end to the molecule. There's no negative end to the molecule. The entire molecule is considered nonpolar. Which of these molecules is polar? Which would have, around the central carbon, an uneven distribution of electrons? Can you see why the molecule with the small hydrogen would be polar while the one with all chlorines is nonpolar?